Great to see you. Welcome to part five of Soma with a therapist where we prepare to embark into the office of Martin Fisher. I hope the intrigue of this game continues to have you enthralled. I hope that our discussions have been interesting for you. I greatly appreciate all of the comments that y'all have been leaving on these episodes, so please continue to do that. This game stimulates a lot of amazing conversation. I also appreciate so much that you are all staying away from putting spoilers in the comments. Thank you for doing that. Uh, if you are not subbed to the channel, or if you haven't given this video a thumbs up, or if you haven't followed the links down in the description, please take a second to do that. It helps the channel immensely, and it you know makes sure that more people get to enjoy what I hope you've been enjoying, which is my playthroughs. All right, without further ado, let's... Uh, See what's up. Old Martin Fisher. What's in here, buddy? A butthole! Show us your butthole! Uh, flashing light warning. I ain't touching the buttholes, man. Oh, Peter's office is open. What is that? What? Well, I hate this for me. That didn't look like a thing that we've been... Oh. Making all this noise. Oh, God. All right. I don't love that we just saw that. Welcome to my place. When I started the art project, I pretty much lived in this lab. Cozy. Catherine, you mind telling me what that thing was that I saw? Simulation assets. Ooh. Alright, let's have a look around here. This is where I would store the arc scans. So you saved the whole staff digitally on these chips? That was the plan. Was? Oh, baby, these things are fried. Bust. Yikes. These are people, chat. Can I pull this out? Or am I going to kill somebody by doing this? An intact memory chip. If we're lucky, we might be able to extract the cipher from it. Alright, why is that one good to go and all these other ones are messed up, though? Honestly, the one I threw, the guy was an asshole. Alright.
Yeah, Coder, we've talked about it a bit. Um, I'm sure we're going to talk about it more, but yeah, man, when you make a copy, you've essentially created another person. And it's pretty messed up the way that that's all getting handled. What is this thing? All right. Uh... Connection error. Troubleshoot. Error code 06FF0A12. Unable to connect to mainframe. Please reset router in the sublevel vault or contact maintenance. Great. Can't wait to go do that. I'm sure that's going to go swimmingly. Connection error. God damn it. Yeah. All right. So this isn't going to work. Need to fix that mainframe connection. Yeah. All righty. I'm going to take these with me for now so they don't short circuit when I turn that mainframe on. What's a sci-fi game without a mainframe? Hate this. Oh. This is where I did my scan. And all the others, I suppose. You don't remember? My scan was the first. Had to test the scanner before I could start making promises. The chair looks pretty familiar. So does this robot. Oh, man. Uh, Strasky, come in. I need help in the lab, the scan room. What happened? Conrad killed himself after the scan. Jesus, how? Um, laser tool? What should I do? I'm gonna need to tell Strohmeyer. No, please. I'm so close. Strohmeyer's gonna shut down the art project. It's not my fault people keep killing themselves. Catherine, what are you gonna do? It's not like you can sneak a 300-pound body out of the lab. I know. Catherine, are you okay? Not even close. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, again, conversation about suicide on my YouTube channel. I encourage you to watch it. Um, one of the things that makes suicide really difficult is that it leaves people with a sense of ambiguity, oftentimes because they do not want to acknowledge a reality that I'm going to share right now which is that in the majority of cases, there are some instances in which we might be able to attribute it to something else, but in general, the decision that a person makes to end their own life is a decision that they are responsible for. So when Conrad made the decision here to end his life after the scan was completed, his death is a consequence of his decision. Catherine, unfortunately, I think is reacting the way that many people do and, and would in that kind of situation which is to be shaken by it, that's understandable, but she's potentially left to personalize that and think she's responsible for it because she was valent to it. Um,
it's not her fault. But she is unfortunately tied up in this. So it would be very important for Catherine to engage with the reminder that it's okay to be affected by this. It sucks that this happened. And also Conrad did that for reason, whether the reason's good or not. Um, and he's responsible for that consequence. They're unfortunately left to pick up the pieces on this. And again, I think the direction you want to go organizationally is what do we need to do in order to ensure that people are informed enough to not make this decision? As people are making this decision off of an arbitrary inference and we got to figure out how to prevent this if this is not actually something that's going to happen. Does this mean that the organization has to come clean that, like, you're going to remain here even though your consciousness has been uploaded to the ARC? And if that's the case, do you still want to upload to the ARC? Like, essentially giving people a choice. But that would mean that the organization has to own up to the fact that this wasn't necessarily what was sold. So at some point, there is accountability of the organization and the people around to put out information and support the people that are in this space in a way that does not make it easier for them to end their own lives. But the decision for Conrad to actually follow through with that is a decision that assuming I assume was made of sound mind and body, and he is responsible for that. It's, it's very important to understand that. Oh, boy. All right. SCX-303 pilot seat. So your brain goes into here. You get to do research cartography and maintenance, but this arrow, this arrow right here bothers me. Because it makes me wonder if this means that... Does your brain get replaced with fish brain? Oh boy. Ah, I see. What? Check the terminal, I just want to make sure. The Nanami composition type compressed Nakajima neurograph continues time 21 milliseconds. It probably is point of view. It probably is. That makes more sense. But like, but again, this is why it's so important to have good descriptions of the data that is available to you because I don't need to be making an inference about that shit. I need to know exactly what I'm getting into. There is so much lack of communication in these areas. And it's really bad. All right. Uh, compressed Nakajima Neurograph. Continuous time, 21 milliseconds. Captured March 12, 2014. Author, Nakajima Shin. Subject name, Nanami. Sex female. Birth, December... 11th, 1997. Death, July 17th, 2021. Nationality, Japanese. Woo. Ooh, that person didn't live very long. What's that, 24 years? Erase data. What? The Pace Files, Berg. 
Type, compressed Nakajima neurograph, continuous time 6 milliseconds. Captured April 28, 2015. Author, David Munchi. Subject, Paul Berg. Sex, male. Birth, November 27, 1984. Death, August 2nd, 2069. Nationality, Canadian. Bro, get out of here. Are you kidding me? You really just make an account to do that? Goodbye. David Munchie. How did this... What is this? The Pace Files. Munchie. Type. Compressed Nakajima Neurograph. Captured April 28th, 2015. Author, Paul Berg. Subject. Name, David Munchie. Sex male, birth October 4th, 1980. Death, May 23rd, 2078. So Munchie ended up getting his own scan. These are legacy scans. Jared. Simon what? Jared. What is this? Why do you have a file of me? You are one of Dr. Munchie's templates. A legacy scan. Compressed Nakajima Neurograph, 5 milliseconds, captured May 2nd, 2015, from David Munchie. Subject, Simon Jarrett, sex male, birth July 16th, 1988, death June 1st, 2015. Remember! Okay. If you're, if you're stuck right now and you're like, wait a second, what the hell is happening? I'm going to give you a quick rundown again. When you make a scan of a person's consciousness, there is a, there is a split that happens. You essentially take one person and then you copy that person and there are two people. Those two people have the same history that their brain has the same lived experience, but now they are two autonomous individuals. You, the person who was copied, cannot experience both of those consciousness simultaneously. You don't have an awareness that those two exist at the same time. So Simon Jarrett maintains his consciousness from July or from uh, May 2nd, 2015 to June 1st, 2015. The copy that was made and uploaded via this neurograph continues to exist, but because it doesn't know necessarily that it was copied, the copy believes that it is Simon. It would think that it just woke up in a new area in the way that we experienced. So the second that we woke up in the chair, underwater, in the place that we currently are, Simon was like, wait a second, where the hell am I? I was just in Toronto. In the same way that every time we re-upload Catherine into a computer, she goes, oh, I'm awake now. Like, that's very jarring. So we are a copy of Simon's consciousness that was loaded into the robot that we saw in the mirror when we were in the bathroom downstairs. So the Simon who was copied died. But I don't know that. Because I think I'm Simon, but I'm a copy of Simon. But then we get into these really intense conversations about, am I a copy or am I Simon? Because if I have all of the pre-existing brain condition and consciousness that Simon had, and that just continues, am I really separate from Simon? Other than there were two vehicles and one of them is now deceased. It's a it's truly a fascinating conversation, but if you're if you're lost on what's happening here, that's what happens. So we can essentially infer that I am I'm a copy 
and that this is the this like the date that I was scanned and captured. It got either caught and then was dormant and then uploaded now or whatever. But like it, th that brain scan, we're operating from the brain scan that was made on May 2nd, 2015. Wild, man. Audio recordings. Posts. Oh, man, this is. There's a dilemma here. And we're going to talk about it. Curiosity takes you in a direction of wanting to listen to these. You could legitimately cause some severe existential anxiety. You could even potentially, and I don't use this word lightly, you could potentially traumatize yourself if you listen to these. This is a, what we're about to engage in here is an experience that nobody in the history of humanity in real life has really had outside of what you just described, Skog, which is a person, if you had a person with like severe dementia or Alzheimer's, listen to themselves when they were 30 years old. Like, this would really be a trip. You would really need to prepare yourself for this. And this is one of those things where you want to ground yourself in the present moment and in your current senses. I am existing right now in this vessel. What I am about to listen to is going to mess me up in part because of my limited ability to conceptualize all that's happening here. Because if I have my eyes and ears and history and consciousness or whatever, and then I listen to these these messages of like what happened to me after the scan was completed, Simon has to be very careful here not to get into this idea that the Simon that he's listening to here is the real Simon. Because if you go there and then you believe that now you are some artificial thing and that somehow makes you less than or illegitimate, that can have some really horrible repercussions on your psyche and on your sense of self. So... Man. I would endorse not listening to this if you didn't feel like you were prepared for it. Like if you were not in a state of mind to really like actually take this information that we're going to hear and integrate it meaningfully, you shouldn't you should set a boundary with yourself and walk away. If you know it's going to be too painful to hear this, You are not required to listen to it just because it exists. You could say to yourself, I have my current consciousness. I have my current eyes and ears, whatever that may mean. I'm going to live my life not knowing what that was. I'm leaving that in the past because as far as I'm concerned, I am a continuation of that person that was in the chair. You could do that and I would understand why a person would. We're going to listen to it. Post scan, May 2nd, 2015. Okay, that's it. Wow, that was fun. That's a relief. Still figuring this out, so. It's freaky. So many lights. What do we do now? Paul and I are going to run tests for a week or so, and then we'll work out a roadmap to your recovery. Well, I feel excited. Can't wait to get back to the living. All right, so uh, 20 days later, or 18 days later, May 20th, 2015. We've worked everything out. Everything is legal. Vouched for by Dr. Peak and Professor Wei. Oh, that's great news. No big change in medication. You'll be taking an aspirin every morning, but that's about it. 
Paul worked out a diet with some variations you should try out. You can continue doing physical therapy. Also, there's some extra cardio training every other day. Okay, getting complicated. Don't worry, it's really not. We're gonna keep an eye on you every week, so we'll be able to adjust the plan if needed. Dude, I died June 2nd. Last recording, June 1st, 2015. The model was sound. It should have worked. It's not your fault, David. I really wish things had turned out differently. Yeah, me too. I was supposed to save you. Hey, you got my brain on file. Maybe you can put it to some use. <laughs> yeah, who knows? You'd be okay with that? Using it for my research? Sure. It's like a part of me lives on or something. Like a donated organ. You know what sucks about dying? What? The crash. Everything up till now. The brain damage. You guys, everything. It's made my life so much more real. I started thinking about all the things I was going to do. I'd never been more excited to be alive. All that hope, wasted. What a, oh my God, man. Simon, look, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, so few of us can empathize with what it would be like to be in the situation where you know you're gonna die. That you know it's there. You know you're on the doorstep. You know that your time is finite. Or I should say there's so few of us that, like, can articulate that experience. Because people who do go through that experience are dead and can't articulate that. So, like, there are some people that have had near-death experiences. Those can be pretty fascinating to read. There are certainly people who maybe thought they were going to die because they had an illness that uh, they were told they were going to die. And then they somehow recovered. But for the most part, many of us haven't had an experience like this. There's, you know, when Simon says to David, it's not your fault. Maybe it's not, but he's got probably maybe some role because he was involved in the treatment of this. But there's no point in engaging with anger at that point. Unless you wanted that to be your last physiological experience before you went out. I mean, I think there's a real caretaking aspect of the way that Simon handled that. Of like, I'm, I'm cool, I'm processing this, I'm, I'm taking it in, I know I'm gonna die, I'm gonna figure out what that means for me with what consciousness I have left. And uh, if part of the meaning that I make out of this is that all of this is okay in some way, shape, or form because I know that a part of me is going to live on at some point, okay. And the layer of this that is just so wild is that as far as I, the Simon reading this, am concerned... I never died. So in, in this very weird way, I actually did get to live on. 
Like, I didn't die because this consciousness is not aware of the fact that it's a copy until now. So, in that way, the people that chose to kill themselves immediately after the scan happened are going to have a similar experience that we had, which is that those copies are not going to know that they killed themselves. Conrad's scan that's in the Ark doesn't know that immediately after it was made a copy because it thinks that it's Conrad doesn't know that immediately after that Conrad killed himself unless he finds a log like what we just found that talks about that experience. So it's super weird because one of the things that you are potentially in a position to do here is grieve you. But in this very like external way. Amazing and trippy. They would know if they plan to. That is true. The belief is that if you killed yourself during or just after the transfer, the copy of your consciousness, Anonymous, that your consciousness as you are would continue into that chip instead of you living out your consciousness after the scan. Jesus Christ, man. man. Imagine making four accounts just to make a point. Um, man. So that's the continuity. So it's there, because otherwise, otherwise, you have the exact experience that Simon just had which is that you realize that the like when Simon when they lifted the thing off of his helmet like when he lifted the helmet off and he was sitting in the chair and he got up and was talking to David Munchie the 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 Simon that we currently are never knew about that doesn't have memory of it because the scan and the copy happened before that moment. So you don't have memories of anything that happened after the copy. So when you, if you kill yourself on the chair and you're uploaded to the ark, that, that copy of you is going to believe that the continuity happened. In the same way that when Simon woke up here, he thought that he was him. And you don't cease to exist, like you don't continue to exist in this current life if you kill yourself, obviously. It's just, it, man, oh man, it's wild stuff. I wonder if this is how our Catherine is able to be so cheerful and confident about the Ark still. She was scanned before any of the later stuff went down. It very well could be. Um, it's interesting though, because in the same way that we have a sense of like, we can observe the environment as it currently is. It's odd to me that Catherine doesn't seem to be able to do that or she can, and she's not engaging with it. Hey, I, why would I erase this data? Though? That seems a little bit odd. I don't feel compelled to do that. What's a legacy scan? They're historic templates for AI construction. Any self-respecting engineer wouldn't use legacies anymore, but they're great for learning. They come with every development kit. So my brain scan turned into a template for artificial intelligence. You should be proud. So much for that mystery. No magic or time travel needed. I was here all along, waiting for someone to shove a picture of my brain into a suit and hit the power button. Yep. Jesus, man. Yeah, Simon, Simon seems to have 
worked hard to make some kind of peace with this, but... Oh, man. Yeah, so Simon became a reproductible commodity indeed. So then it makes you wonder how many Simons are out here. <laughs> Hate it. This is gonna be fun. I just know it is. I just know we're gonna love every second Thanks, of this. Thanks, Romario. That's a real helpful report. Be quiet. The proxy listens. What happened to Theta? No explanations anywhere. That kind of sounds like a warning. say chat let's go Theta life and environmental control. Wow. Climate functional pressure, 11.2 PSI. Temperature, 6 Celsius. Humid humidity, 62%. Air healthy. CO2 processor active, 78%. Gas mixer, active 94%. Water, conserved. Purifiers, active 31%. Waste management failing. Recycling, active 2%. Energy recovery, 17%.
There is something in here with me. Oh boy. Oh shit. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Oh god, don't look at me when you come over here. Don't look at me. It's just the OSHA inspector. I just need to see movement. I need I need to get a visual on this thing. There it is. Oh god. Oh god! Don't look at me! dawn of the second day. I just got knocked out. No, bro, no. Oh god, I'm gonna have to touch a butthole. Oh, I can open doors! Go in there!
Maybe it can't hear me. Maybe I have to just be quiet. Oh, okay. I can't see. Okay, so I me running was really stupid. Oh boy, haul ass buddy. I'm I'm limping, man. Come on, Simon. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, why does this room have to be? Oh, Jesus. Okay. This is not the way. Oh, move up! Oh, God, keep moving. Such a stupid design. Oh. Are you kidding me? Sounds like the Banshee from Mass Effect 3. I really hope I don't need to do anything with that. Let's go, Simon. Come on, buddy. 
Good job, Sonic. This better have worked. I'm not going to go again. Lock that door, Catherine. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to touch the butthole, man. I am like in a bad way right now. Cause I'm pretty sure it makes me feel better. Jesus Christ, what the hell? What the hell are you doing? I know it looks bad, but it makes me feel a lot better. Helps me focus. That's... I, I mean, that's the wow you're hooking up to. I need it, okay? I wouldn't have made it this far without it. <sighs> Let's just keep going. Well, it's not true, Simon. We've made it very far without it. The legacy scan of me that was on the computer. What did you use it for? It's a template that has an intelligence pathworm already etched into the base. So, if I wanted to build an AI, I wouldn't have to reinvent a whole model. I would be able to focus on the things that the AI is to be used for. Is every AI self-aware? Do they also think they're Simon? What? No, Simon. Don't worry. It's not like we just put people into robots and machinery and let them run free. That'd be really cruel. It doesn't work like that. Or at least it didn't used to work like that. Truly sentient machines. Thinking they are people is definitely... Oh, okay, so she knows. Okay. But you kept them sentient for the Ark. Yes, and I basically had to invent the method. Okay, well, I appreciate that she at least has an awareness that that's a new development. So, you're not worried that there are other Simons or Catherines running around out there? Now I am. Geez, Simon, some thoughts are better left alone. Go ahead, plug in that chip you found. First, scan log. Here we are, arc scan log 2103, Catherine Chun. Nikolai Vashkin. Mark Sarong killed himself. Arc project on hold as Strohmeyer investigates the death of Sarong. All right, Luis Marin killed herself. Nathan Grau, suicide. Gavin Finley, suicide. Astrid Cryer, suicide. Robin Bass, suicide. Strohmeyer reprimanded me one more death and we're out. Guy Conrad, suicide. Arc project on hold indefinitely. Damn. Scheduled scans. Joaquin Dufresne, John Strohmeyer, Richard Tavo, Jane Am Adams, Ashish Shankar, Marisaka Devyao, Sean Evans. So those never happened, it seems. Where's Carl? Anyone who could know a security cipher. Oh, this is so messed up. Oh, batch four type compressed Nakajima neurograph. Sarah Lindwall. Not dead yet. Nationality Greenlander. Note, she said she'd help out delivering the Ark. This is Mark Saran. Killed himself because of continuity. Strohmeyer's really mad. It's Titan Security. Arc Project on hold. Brandon Wan. Delta Refugee. Construct Wrangler. He's working for Strohmeyer now. Still alive. Robin Bass. Another fucking continuity suicide. Strohmeyer locked me out of my lab again. Maggie Komaribi. We look so much alike. In a different life, I'm sure we'd be best friends. 
Heather Wolsick. She helped me cut the wave leak from the helmet. If anything, it should make the post scan hangover less severe. Peter Strasky. Strasky was cheerful and funny as always. Alice Coster said she'd help construct the Ark, but not carry it to Phi. We need someone from Data Security Group. Oh, okay. Um, Data Security Group would be... security people at Kronstadt or Strohmeyer. Why wouldn't you just... They'll construct Wrangler. He's working for Strohmeyer now. Probably Brandon Wan. Very promising. I'll just load him up and get the simulator going. I hate this. There we are. What are we doing exactly? We're going to have a talk with Mr. Wan. Use the computer to activate the simulation. Oh my god, I hate this. I hate this so much. So, we are talking to the consciousness of a person. Like, we're literally uploading this for our own game here. This dude's been dormant. Are you kidding me, Catherine? Oh my God. All right, so here's what we're doing right now for those who don't know what's going on. We are, we have access a uh, the consciousness of Brandon Wan. When we upload this, his consciousness gets run through a simulation. It's actually him. It's as if he's waking up, like we did when we were under the water. So that Brandon Wan that we just woke up in the absolute darkness and Catherine starts talking to him, just woke up and the last thing he knew was whatever he experienced before he like went to sleep. So by me shutting that simulation off, I essentially just... I, I just killed him. That's fucking crazy, man. I just killed him when I did that, as far as I know. Catherine's people skills are dog shit. Like, tell me what you know about him. Where is he more likely to be comfortable where I wake him up? Telling him to calm down is not the way. Like, this dude's going to wake up and he's going to be... Oh, man. All right. Oh. 
And if you're sitting here and you're like, dude, Dr. Mick, you don't need to worry about this. It's just a simulation. No, it's not. Like, again, all the conversations that we've been having about the nature of consciousness applies here. Like, this is him. That wasn't so bad. This room might really got me worked up, bastard. What? What is it? Where am I? Relax, Mr. Wan. Just keep calm. Dr. Chun? What the hell is this place? I need your help. I have to get the new security cipher. Why are you doing this? Is this some trick? I'm not giving you anything. I'm trying to save a lot of people. No, you're lying. This is all a lie. Look at this place. It's a fucking joke. Get me out of here, Chun, or I'll punch your teeth in. Simon, what the hell? We need to do this. You fucking suck at this, Catherine. You're gonna make me put my freaking banana down. <sighs> okay. All right, friends, here's the deal. When you know that you are going to engage with a person who is highly stressed out. You know that he's going to wake up and be stressed. This is similar to like if you know that somebody's been having a bad day and you got to like deliver news to them or like if a person's come to if they've been injured or whatever. Okay. A couple tips from old... Uncle Dr. Ro Dr. Mick coming at you here on how you handle this. The very first thing you do is you want to give that person important information that is very simple and clear so that they understand what's going on. So when he wakes up and he gets amped, if you're Catherine, the thing that you want to say here is, Hey, Brandon, it's Catherine. I realize that this is that this is weird and that you might be a bit shaken here. I'm here with you. You are in uh, I, whether you tell him he's in a simulation or not, I don't know, but you would you would say like, you know, here's where you are. Listen to my voice. I'm here with you. And there's some information that I'd like to get from you if I can. I need I need your help. Are you open to that? Or is there anything you need in order to get your bearings here? Give him a chance to like scan. And if he goes, this feels messed up, you go, hey, I hear you. I realize that this feels messed up. I'm with you. I just want you to listen to my voice. You're okay. You're here. Like you want to empathize with him. You want to you work with what he gives you instead of just immediately hitting him over the head with a two by four of your agenda. Telling a person who is physiologically aroused to calm down is never going to work. So get that phrase out of your damn head. Brandon, I, th I realize this is upsetting. You empathize with it. I realize this is upsetting. I realize you're probably disoriented. This is Catherine. You know who I am. You know my voice. You might even call back to like, you know, hey, remember you and I worked together on X project? Remember when we joked about how bad the coffee was in the break room? Like you get him to engage with what's familiar. And then once you have him, then you lay it on him in terms of what you need from him. So important. But don't ever tell a person to change their emotional experience. Meet them where they are. Engage with it. Empathize with it. Catherine here is a dog shit example of how you engage with a person who's stressed out.
Did we just bring that guy to life? I mean, he's a perfect scan, meant for the Ark. He's the real deal. And we turned him off. Took it all away again. I really thought that was going to work. Maybe we can try again. Catherine! Oh my god! Look, if I could ask Catherine anything right now, it would be, where is he expecting to wake up? Do you have any context for this? You want this dude to have an experience that aligns with his expectations. He's gonna be anxious because when he wakes up, this isn't what he's expecting. Can we just keep him alive until we've got the cipher? The longer he's exposed to the computer model, the more he'll get hung up on it. So, what's wrong with letting him settle in a little? It would drive him insane. So let's keep the session short and the suffering to a minimum. I don't know what these modules are. Oh. oh man, this is like making me sick to my stomach. security cipher. Why are you doing this? Is this some trick? I'm not giving you anything. Please, we really need that cipher. No, you're lying. This is all... <sighs> She's doing the same thing every time. Oh my god, please. Try something else. He is unaware every time, but we're literally, we're like, we're killing a new person every time we do this. This is crazy. That wasn't so bad. This room really got me worked up. Bastard. What? 
What is this? Where am I? Relax, Mr. Wan. Just keep calm. Dr. Chun? What the hell is this place? I need your help. I have to get the new security cipher. Why are you doing this? Is this some trick? I'm not giving you anything. I'm trying to save a lot of people. No, you're lying. Simon, what the hell? We need to do this. <laughs> I'm looking around to see if there's another module somewhere, man. This is crazy. Imogen Reed, Guy Conrad, test environments, float tank, scan room, beach, Versailles, agreeable interior test, excellent data reconstructed by WoW, do not use. With pilot seat, better continuation, that's just the one we need. Float tank, water-filled steel tank, sensory limiter. Holy shit, that can't be good, but... Corrupt data, okay. Exactly what I was thinking, right? He's got to be what he's expecting. That wasn't so bad. This my really got me worked up, bastard. What? Where did he... Alice? Congratulations, Mr. Wan. The scan was successful. Chun? Where's Alice? She had to leave. Listen, I really need to know the new security cipher. What? Why? Why would you need that? This is the trick. Please calm down. I knew you couldn't be trusted. None of this is real. But you won't break me, Wow. You hear me? You won't break me! I think we need to build the scene so it's more what he'd expect. As soon as he starts to doubt, we've lost him. You're right. We need to think this through. We need some more data. So you can't, you clearly you can't like upload people. That's not on. anything over here for me.
All right. Um. Hmm. There's nothing here that's of use to me. Just to see. He does seem to get quite agitated when he hears Catherine's voice. Here we go, Brandon Wan's room. I'll just override the lock for you. Are you kidding me, Catherine? I wonder what the real Simon would have thought if he knew about me. What do you mean? You do know about yourself. No, I, I mean the real Simon. The human Simon. Going by your reactions, I'd say he'd be pretty upset. If we get to know him, maybe we can make the simulation a little smoother. Unreal. She could just unlock this the whole time. He likes the desert, he likes castles. Fairchild Award for art for achievements in the engineering in in the engineering youth boats. Pagodas. <clears throat> August 14th, 2103. Akers finally agreed to evacuate Delta. Goya Cryer and I moved into Theta today. Akers said he'd stick around for a while longer, that crazy bastard. I take pride in my work, but goddamn, that place is miserable since the service stopped sending parts. August 25th. Did my arc scan together with Alice? Strohmeyer told me. a girl named Alice. They did their scans together. Alice Coster? We could try to make him think that she's there during the simulation. Might make him talk. Not sure how, though. Keep looking. Oh, Strohmeyer told me that the hangover would basically kill me. Such an asshole. I was fine at first, but got a splitting headache a couple hours later. The biggest pain was that Chun girl. She's so fucking uncomfortable at all times, it makes my skin crawl. Yeah, there you go. So he doesn't like Catherine. Strohmeyer went ballistic and shut down all future scans for the ARC project. Apparently, Conrad wanted in on the continuity and just fried himself right in the pilot seat after the scan. Something tells me we'll be getting new security ciphers. January 15th. Just heard that Komoribi survey team is going to Delta to pick up Acres. He's been alone for months now. Can't imagine what he's been up to. Is there something to say about intellectual curiosity with scientists like her when it comes to empathy that she clearly lacks in all of this? This is why it's important to remember that you're working with human subjects. It's part of the gig, and as I talk about all the time, empathy is a skill. Uh, there are people that have, you know, more of a strong foundation, which makes empathy easier to learn and engage with, but empathy is a skill. So... If you're going to work with human subjects, uh, it's incredibly important that you remember you're working with humans. Same goes for like bedside manner with doctors. It's very easy to start seeing humans as test subjects. 
or as like living cadavers and shit like that. You gotta be really careful about that because it's a form of objectification. If you see somebody as a test subject instead of as a person, you're likely to engage with them as an object. So, you gotta practice that skill. <clears throat> Brandon, you ready to go? Strohmeyer says it's time to move. I'm waiting for Strasky and Alvaro to pack up their stuff. Head downstairs, and I'll meet you there. Don't take too long. Don't worry, we're right behind you. I think I just heard Alice talking to Brandon on the intercom. Seems like they were getting ready to leave. You got that from the intercom? Must be a transmission buffer. Hang on. Great, this is exactly what we need. I think we got this, Simon. I can synthesize Alice's voice from the intercom and use it to impersonate her for the simulation. We can trick them into feeling safe enough to open up. Great. Definitely feeling good about this. Good job with the intercom. I didn't know you could data mine. What's it like? It's just something that I do now. So it comes naturally to you. That's really interesting. Yeah, I'll make sure to add it to my dating profile. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to- it's great to laugh again. This is awful, man. This is the kind of nefarious shit that you worry about happening with stuff like this. Alice module that we can use. So she'll be with Brandon in the simulation. Sort of. I'll still need to do the talking, but it'll sound and look like Alice. Yeah, I mean, this is a perfect example of what I was just talking about when I answered your question, Christian. Catherine is so wrapped up in the, like, science and experimentation and the fact that they can do this that she's not really taking the time to empathize with how awful this is. I mean, we essentially killed six Brandons. And she's like, Ooh, I can mimic Alice. This is so fun. We're going to trick him and get what we need. And then we'll just kill him. Ha 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 ha. Isn't that amazing that we can do that? I, and like this, this happens, man. Like this absolutely can happen. If you're not actively and intentionally grounding yourself in the reality of what it is that you're doing, you will start to distance yourself from the humanity of this. Because you get so excited about how intellectual of an endeavor this is and the fact that you can do something that should goes out the window. It's like the old Jurassic Park quote. You spend so much time wondering whether you could, you didn't think about whether you should. This is the direct result of objectification via test subject or like this is a scan or whatever, right? Like objectification doesn't always happen when we talk about things, you know, like, like race or roles or whatever, like <coughs> objectification is something that can have really bad consequences, even if it's not like a thing where it's a, a an aggression against somebody test subject. Scan, sample, copy, etc. These are all things that have essentially made it so that we're not talking to Brandon. We're talking to a simulation. Makes it easier to engage with the science of it all. I wouldn't know that. I don't know that I'd even call it apathy so much as the energy and the intrigue of this is misplaced into an area that makes it easier to override the humanity of what's happening. Better work, man. That wasn't so bad. This show might really got me worked up, bastard. Well, that's what you get for listening to his stories. I guess I had it coming. About Strohmeyer. He said he needed a new site for ASAP. What should I tell him? It's all right. I can talk to him. Wait. Didn't Sean just tell you to take it easy? Don't worry, I'm not going to tell anyone. I do feel hungover. Okay. 
1729 over 42, 12 over 407. Got it? Yeah, I got it. I'm sorry, Mr. DeLong. Brandon. Goodbye. That's enough. We got what we need. Is that what we are? Simulations? Yeah, but it shouldn't make any difference. You're still you. And he's still I'm not him! Sure what to do with the data. You decide. That was so shitty that she did that. That was... Oh, God. All right. Look, I, I'm going to take... Oh, God. All right, I have two options here. I can get really mad at Catherine, or I can try to engage empathy for her, and I'm going to try for a second here to engage empathy with her. I don't know that Catherine is actively being malicious and withholding. Doesn't change the impact of her actions. But I don't... Uh, there, there's a real chance that Catherine's not doing this out of malice. I think Catherine, Catherine may not possess certain interpersonal skills. She may not have learned them prior to being scanned. Uh, Catherine may be engaging with the intellectual aspect of this more than anything else. Like, it, there is a real chance that Catherine's literally doing her best. She's doing her best. She has an agenda. She has a thing she needs to accomplish. She knows that Brandon can get it. And she just isn't engaging with the nuance of the situation. She's being forced to engage with the nuance of the situation via Simon, who as a person outside of their sphere, has a bit of an ability to see what's happening from a less invested perspective, where he can kind of engage with a more general sense of like morality and empathy. So I, I really I don't think that Catherine's this like cold blooded assassin. I think she's just she's not thinking about the consequences of her actions. She's not. I think she I I I really believe that this is in part a product of Catherine being desensitized to this entire process. This is novel for us. Running a simulation where we know that the person that we're engaging with in the simulation is is a full, perfect copy of consciousness, it's really jarring to see this go the way that it's going. If Catherine was doing this repeatedly over and over and over and over and over again, she likely habituated to it. In the same way that, like, if you're a person who's been doing medical research for 20 years and you do it on mice and you are injecting mice with various pathogens or you're killing them or whatever... That may just not even be something you even think or feel ab about anymore. Where if I took <clears throat> a person who's never done that before, who <clears throat> loves animals, and you bring them into that lab to do that, they might be incredibly distressed by the idea that they have to do all of these experiments on mice. So desensitization over time and habituation to something like this is also part of why I think Catherine is so, as we perceive her, detached from what's happening. And I mean, that's, that, there, that's a real issue that you can come across. I mean, in the same way, like to use an example from my own life, like if a person says to me that they're experiencing suicidal ideation, it doesn't freak me out in the slightest. Like I can have that conversation with a person like it's nothing. And if I've had, because I've had those conversations repeatedly, the first time I talked to somebody who was actively suicidal, it was a hell of a lot different experience than it would be for me now. So we always have to be mindful of the ways in which habituation to certain things potentially precludes us from having certain access to uh, empathy 
for the subjective experience of the individual person that you're engaging with at that point in time. It's hard. I mean, and this is why I'm such a fan of bringing intention to the way that you engage in your world and with other people, because the more you do that, and the more you remind yourself of context and audience and all of this stuff, the more likely you are to be to engage more authentically and empathically with the people around you in a situation like this. If Catherine engages with the fact that like, okay, man, like, here's the thing, right? Like, so Catherine, by viewing this as a simulation, says, okay, cool, let's just do this as trial and error, which is a very scientific view of it. Let's pop Brandon into the computer. Let's pick a ski lodge and let's run the simulation and see what happens. And then we'll use feedback to do subsequent whatevers. If she had engaged for a second with the reality of the situation before we did this, what she might have said is, okay, when Brandon wakes up from this simulation, he is going to have a certain set of expectations, and I need to ensure that he is not on guard in any way, shape, or form so that we can get this information for him in a, from him in a meaningful way. So what are the things that we can do preemptively to ensure a better experience for him based on what we know about him. <coughs> because if we have to kill him, I only want to do it once. And think about how much of a difference that would make, right? Like, I'm not running around... Well, I mean, I'm still running around with my a chick, like a chicken with my head cut off, but at least I'm only doing this once, right? Like, we're not treating him as a test subject anymore. We're treating him as a human who has dignity... So uh, this is why it's important to engage with the context that you're in. Uh, yeah, Pharaoh, that's a decent way to look at it. What would you think about the fact that Simon refers to human self as the real Simon rather than saying original or other? What does that say about the way he sees himself? Well, he sees himself as a copy. And again, that's some of the existential dread you're going to have in that regard. Um, we're, we're hearing part of the way that he's conceptualizing his identity and he's doing that relative to a pre previous version of himself. Could it also be Catherine values the hard drive the scan is on as the actual consciousness? I imagine how she would feel if, she, if the hard drive got destroyed. I, I, who knows? You'd have to ask her. Right. This, you're, you're correct. This is exactly why there are ethical standards in human subjects research. You can't just, you can't just do this shit because it's interesting. I don't really know what that means, Capramble. All right, so now I have to make a decision here. Do I erase the data or shut down? And of course, Catherine is not going to give me any information about this. I don't know what it means to do this. I don't have to do either. I can walk away from it. Oh, well, I guess that settles it. Hey, Simon, go put him back in the ark because wouldn't that be nice of us to do? No, don't care. You got what you needed, Catherine? Okay. Holy shit, man. Uh, no, I do not, Fictioner. Sorry, Can't make that call. We can get to the Dunbat now. Get back here. Why is this door partially open now?
Catherine, couldn't we just have extracted the cipher from Brandon's data somehow? It's so cruel bringing him back like we did. No, that's impossible. Memories don't work like that. Let's just hope it was worth it. Her tone of voice there has me thinking. That was a bit of a defensive posture there. Like, that's not an unrealistic question. I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing for Simon to wonder. Is there any other way that we could have done that? And her defensiveness there suggests either one of two things. One, she is also distressed by what just happened and she's kind of engaging with the reality of it. Uh, or two, it was possible. We just didn't have time. I mean, it, 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 there are so many ways that people work to try to cope with stuff like this. And one of those ways is to double down on your reasoning for why you did a thing in the first place. I did not delete him. I unplugged the thing and I shut it down. I have to hope, I hope that the whole thing is shut down just because there's no electricity running through that chip. But I did not erase it. I didn't realize that when I pulled the USB out, that was the end of it. Oh man, what a nightmare. There you are, just warming up the Dunbat for us. It's been collecting dust for months, so it might need a minute. Okay, that's it. That's everything. Let's go ahead and. Huh, that's weird. Huh. Never mind. What do you need me to do? Head inside the dock. The Omnitool can open the door now and get into the Dunbat. Then plug me in and I'll take us into the Abyss. Sounds easy enough. I want to know what her investment in all of this, like, at the end of the day is. I don't know that that's been clearly stated to me. <clears throat> uh, that's a question for Discord, Capramble. Yeah, I think she just wants to launch the Ark. I mean, I, I was kind of wondering if there was maybe more to it than that, but I guess if her life's work is the Ark and she wants to launch it, so be it. It's kind of, I don't know, I don't know. I was hoping there was maybe a little more nuance to this, but... So we're already underwater. And then somehow... <clears throat> this is gonna take us more underwater.
I'm not going back in that damn basement. I'm not doing it. Catherine? Little help, homie? I guess she is in the danger restricted area. Okay, I'm missing something here. Plug, oh, gotta plug it in. Okay. That just gotta just gotta plug it in. So that thing was alive? Dude, this is, uh, man. This is just, I just, man. Catherine is not my favorite person. Oh, she, of course she knew. Are you kidding me? There's no way she didn't know that. High security area. Mm. I just got an achievement for failing to acquire the Dunbat. Oh good, we're right above that hallway where that thing was. I love this, this is my favorite. Nothing eerie about this. No, sir. Nothing at all. Nothing weird. This is perfectly fine. Bring Catherine back. Documents. My decision. 
I've decided to finalize the arc with the scans we have. I'm sorry for all of you who wanted to go but didn't get a chance to scan yourself before the project was put on hold. It's been two months since I've added a scan and I don't see how I'll ever be able to win back the support you all showed when we started the project. I'm sorry. I never meant for anyone to take their lives. It was never my intention to fool anyone. I just wanted to save something. It was never my intention to fool anyone. Boy, she's... A good apology acknowledges the impact that your actions had. Generally does not include a listing of all of your intentions. As we've talked about in several playthroughs, impact is more important than intention. Impact has to be acknowledged before intention. It's okay to know that you, it's okay to mean well. Sometimes you mean well and bad shit happens. And this is what I mean. Like, I don't know that, I don't know that Catherine is doing all of this maliciously, but the impact of her actions has very severe consequences. But you cannot expect people to empathize with or be curious about your intentions until you actively show them that you understand and validate the impact that those actions had on them. And this apology doesn't really have that. It's not great. And there's even a little bit of guilt tripping in here. It's been two months since I've added a scan. I don't see how I'll ever be able to win back the support you all showed me when we started the project. That's a... That's passive aggression. That's basically saying like, I, you know, it's on you that I don't have the support. That, that's what that's doing. It's deferring accountability. It's, you know, well, if you guys would just support me, I could do more scans, but because you haven't stood up for me, your fault. You gotta be real careful with the kind of language. It doesn't rub people the right way. You can feel that in the message. Language is, in, is ridiculously important in how you convey yourself. So, that's blaming the victims. What's left? Apply interface module, seal arc capsule, ask permission from 4Q, brief Ivashkin, Lindwell, Peterson, and Hill, take shuttle to Omicron, Pick up power suits, ride the climber into the abyss, regroup at Tau, head to launch site, launch the bullet, launch the arc. Arc locator over in Tau. So we got Theta, Omicron, Tau, and Phi. Arc attitude survey. To gauge staff opinion, please fill out this short survey. Why not? Recently, it was decided that the ARC project would become Pathos 2's last official commitment. The staff has been urged to carry on with their duties despite Earth's catastrophic condition. I think the ARC project is the most logical step towards saving mankind, and that we should spend as much time and resources as needed to complete it. I disagree. To embark, every passenger needs to be flushed with the electromagnetism using a pilot seat. These scanning sessions are known to cause nausea and headaches, sometimes lasting up to three days. I think temporary physical discomfort, no matter how severe, is a small price to pay for is a small price to save mankind. 
That's a loaded question. Strongly disagree. The Ark is built to fit a Ranger MK7 probe, meaning it could be shot into space with an Omega space gun and technically survive for thousands of years, living off the light from our sun and distant stars. I think the Ark should leave Earth behind and be launched into space. I mean, if Earth's that bad a shape, sure. The digitization of humanity is an opportunity to make a quantum leap in our own evolution. The people inside the Ark will out of necessity be generated from existing genetic code, but could be altered to allow for cosmetic changes, ease aging, and even prevent death. God damn it. I think we are at risk of losing our humanity if we are to rid ourselves of disease and our mortality. Well, I don't mind getting ourselves rid of disease, but mortality... I mean, I personally hate the idea of immortality. So I agree with this. There are only 58 people left alive to be stored inside the Ark. A way to diversify and expand the population would be to introduce artificial intelligences that would in every way appear to be human, but with childlike and naive sensibilities. As we continue to explore the nature of intelligence, we may find a way to make them smarter in the future. I think even an inferior group of artificial people would benefit our society? No. Thank you for participating. This is how your colleagues voted. ARC approval, 74% strongly agree. Eternity among the stars, strongly agree 66%, agree 26, four and four. Inferior companions, that's a pretty equal spread, but strongly disagree is the strongest. Pain for gain, wow, 94% of the vote got agree or strongly agree. Holy shit. Artificial evolution, 32% agree. Woo. That's cool that we got to see that data. Huh? Wait, this isn't... Oh no, WoW got to the Dunbat before we did, am I right? Well, it was talking. That's rarely a good sign. Damn it. The Dunbat was our best shot. I was really banking on this to work. Come on, we can't quit now. There's got to be another way. How do you think you did it? How did the team get the Ark down the Abyss in the first place? If they didn't use the Dunbat, the only other way would be the Climber in Omicron. It's like an elevator which supposedly reaches all the way down into the Abyss. Okay, so we do that. We go to Omicron and take the elevator. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We'll just head over to Omicron and hope there's a power suit that fits you. You know, so you don't implode while in the abyss. <laughs> that does sound useful. All right, let's go then. Wait, what is this place? Seems to be a lot of information on the Ark here. There's a prototype and everything. Okay. Let's start it up. I want to see how it works. Maybe we can figure out how to get on the Ark. You didn't know how to get us on? How difficult could it be? At some point, this is no longer on Catherine. At some point, this is on me for continuing to go along with her.
Like, I'm essentially, to a degree, enabling her behavior by continuing to activate her and continuing to follow. That's what, that, and honestly, that's a part of my frustration here, is... She has me by the balls because of a desire to survive. And it's the exact reason why all of these people who were in charge had everybody in this project. Because people wanted to survive. They wanted their consciousness to go on. It's fascinating the way that this works. Catherine is providing very, very limited amounts of information. And as a result of that, we are being left to make certain assumptions about Catherine. And one of the things that I think is important for people to know is that there, more often than not, Unless people have had a ton of adverse experiences, people will generally skew in the direction of giving people the benefit of the doubt. Because Simon doesn't know really anything about what's going on and is learning about it piecemeal, and Catherine is somebody that he perceives to be an authority on this, he perceives to be somebody who has not just power in the sense that she can control some of these facilities, but has power in the sense that she has intellectual power. She, she has knowledge. She has an understanding of what this is. Simon is likely to fill in the blanks with a assumption of competence. That Catherine knows what she's doing. She's directive. She's concise. She is limited in the information that she provides. But there's a degree of confidence that she, ta that she talks with. And because she was part of this project, had a position of power on it or whatever, if you're Simon, of course you're going to believe that she knows what she's talking about. I, I, I think what is really just... <sighs> what sucks about this entire thing is that we, like, need her. And there's not really a lot of leverage that we have against her other than if we were to say, if you don't give me all the information that I need in order to make an informed decision on this, I'm going to snap this Omni tool in half and go just drown myself in the ocean. But I don't even know if that's going to matter. And I don't know, and because we don't possess much knowledge about this whole thing, I don't even know that we would know whether she's telling the truth or not. Like she, the thing that I hate is that she's using, she's withholding information as a means to play on Simon's tendency to give her the benefit of the doubt, and it's working to her advantage. What I, and it's just kind of mind blowing to me that she keeps putting us in these compromising situations and just goes, oh ha he he he. Guess we got to just turn the lights on now and take an evaluation of what's going on. Oh, by the way, I don't know how to actually get us on the ark. But she has us cost sunk now. And again, every playthrough I talk about this, uh, you can choose to stop at any time. Just because I'm super fully invested in this doesn't mean I have to continue to go along with this. I could say to her, you know what? Screw you, man. I'm not doing this anymore. You're, you've misled me too many times. So I'm just going to chill here for a while. Maybe I'll uh, find a way to destroy my circuitry. Because I still have the autonomy of not being connected to a WoW. Approximately 43.75%. 896 terabytes memory corrupted simulation reconfiguration necessary. Whoa. Look at all these terabytes. Memory corruption detected. Please reduce memory footprint.
I don't know what any of this is. Smooch, don't spoil stuff, and don't backseat. Unless I specifically ask for it. RX 521358L. I don't know what any of this is. Okay. Prep arc with signal transmitter. Power packs. Tools. Extra oxygen P11 permission. It's just a map. Haimatsu power suit, proper usage for the safety of you and your colleagues. One, put on the neoprene undersuit and body harness. Two, check the HPS for any visual damages. Three, starting with the legs, fix the parts onto your harness and work yourself upwards. Lock all the pieces together as you go. Let a partner help you with the back piece and the torso. Zip me up! Tap the secure button on your arm piece. You should hear the suit seal itself. The suit will then start to equalize pressure and tap into the oxygen tank. If the suit doesn't seal itself, flex the shock absorbers and try again. If it still won't work, don't try to fix it yourself. Contact maintenance. Note, the HPSs are very heavy and the suit will compensate. You will effectively be stronger than you think you are. Be careful. Regular straining, training applies. Don't hold your breath. Don't stay out too long. Don't dive too deep. Don't dive with malfunctioning equipment. High pressure diving suits need to undergo a mandatory maintenance checkup before suiting up. Not doing so puts you into risk of oxygen poisoning, pulmonary edema, and death. Cool, that sounds like fun. All right. Wow, that's so cool. It's the whole gang. A crew photo? Really? Who are you saving this for? The world was dead. Thanks, Simon. I thought being an asshole wasn't invented until the 22nd century. Now I know better. Yeah, just uh, as a reminder for anybody who might be in here for the first time or hasn't been here for a while, just in general, I don't want any information about what to do ever unless I specifically ask for it. I don't want clarification. I don't want to know gameplay tips. I don't want to know any of that stuff. Uh, the fun of these runs is predicated on me figuring out as I go. So unless I specifically ask for help, assume I don't want it. All right. Uh, swipe Omni tool. Got all these power cables that hook up to just random shit. All right. What's this thing? That's just a compound examiner. Coster uses it to investigate structural integrity and in payload frameworks. Of course. Could you fit inside it? If I knew what you were made of, it would be a hell of a lot easier to figure out how to get you on the Ark. Well, I'll give it a try. Guess we'll figure out what I'm made of in part six. YouTube, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I appreciate you immensely. Leave a like. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Follow the links down in the description. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day or night to watch my content. And I hope I get to see you over in part six. If you're waiting for the next one to come out, get it out to you as soon as we can. If you're binging, see you in the next one. Appreciate you immensely. See you on the next one.